we're going to look at solving equations with like terms today. And I want to point out that the solving equation part is exactly the same. But we're just throwing in this step of combining like terms. Okay? So let's talk about what like terms are. Like terms are terms that have the same variable, they have the same variable, or they have no variable, and the variable part must be the same. So, um, you know, if you have x and you have x squared, those would not be like terms because they do not have the same variable part, okay? Like terms must be on the same side of the equal sign, okay? They must be on the same side of the equal sign. So we're always going to look for like terms to combine first. So let's talk about some examples. These examples we have right here, these are not equations. These are actually expressions because they do not have an equal sign, okay? And so if we look at this example, 3x and 5x are like terms. And so notice I've circled them to help identify them. Okay, they're like terms because they both have x. And all we have to do is add their coefficient. Remember the number in front of the variable is called the coefficient. So 3x plus 5x is simply 8x. All you have to do is add or subtract the coefficients, the numbers, and then the variable stays the same. And then also look here, we also have negative 8, see I'm putting that sign with it, plus 9. Those have no variable, remember those are called constants, those are called constants, and so we can put negative 8 plus 9 together which is positive 1. So I would write plus 1. So that's what that expression would look like if we combined like terms. Okay, let's look at the other example. We've got 6y and 10y. They both have that y. So 6y plus 10y is 16y. Okay, and so notice they don't have to be right next to each other. And then we've got positive 7 minus 18. And if you're really bad with integers, pick up your calculator and use your calculator. So 7 minus 18 is negative or minus. Okay. Now, when we're solving our equations, once we've simplified it by combining like terms, remember our next step is to cancel out the constant term by adding or subtracting, okay? And then remember we cancel out the coefficient by multiplying or dividing. So these last two steps are what we already looked um, at with two-step equations, okay? So let's work through um, these, some of these equations together. So first off, it's always a good idea to continue to draw your line down through the equal sign. It helps us identify what our like terms are, okay? So over here on the left, I have some like terms, 5x minus x. Remember, this is an understood one. So 5x minus 1x is 4x. So I've simplified that left side equals 20. And now we're just down to a regular equation to cancel out the 4 or the coefficient. The inverse operation is to divide. So I would get x equals 5. Okay. Okay, let's look at the second example. Again, I'm going to draw a line down through my equal sign. I'm going to look for like terms. Do I have any like terms over here? Yes, I do. I have 5x plus 4x. So 5x plus 4x is 9x. And then I'm going to bring down the minus 27 equals 81. 
Okay, so now we're down to just a regular two-step equation. So now I'm going to cancel out my constant term. We're trying to get everyone away from the x, remember? It's like you're running away from all your ex-boyfriends or girlfriends, right? So the opposite of subtracting 27 would be to add 27. And so that leaves me with 9x equals 108. And then to cancel out the 9, the opposite is to divide by 9. And if you're not sure what that is, use your calculator. 108 divided by 9 is 12. x equals 12. If you think you're getting the hang of it, go ahead and try to maybe stop the video and work ahead on your own, or keep following along with me. Okay, so again, we're looking for like terms on the same side. So over here, we have negative 10x and positive 5x. Really important that we include that sign there, because negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5, and then we have our x. Now we're down to just a regular two-step equation. To cancel out the 12, remember this is a positive 12, so that means we would subtract 12, and that gives me negative 5x equals 6. Now don't panic, I know this probably looks funny, to cancel out the negative 5, this is negative 5 times x. So the opposite is to divide, and we're actually getting a fraction answer here. This would be x equals negative 6 fifths, and you can leave it just like that. You can change it to a decimal, but there's no need to. Okay. The next problem, again, let's look for our like terms. 2g plus 2g is 4g, and then we also have negative 4 and positive 3, which would be negative 1, okay? Combined our like terms. And now again, we're just down to a regular two-step equation. Add 1 to both sides, and then divide by 4. Most of the time, this last step here is going to be division. I'm not going to say always, but most of the time. Okay, so two more. Again, looking for our like terms. 3w and 2w, these are on the same side, makes 5w. 15 minus 5 makes 10. Okay. Minus 10, minus 10, 5w equals negative 5, divide by 5, w equals negative 1. Okay, and then the last one, okay, do I have any like terms on the left or on the right? I don't, right? So this is just a regular two-step equation. We're going to do minus 7. One-third Q equals 5. And then I believe we've already talked about this. The inverse would be to divide by one-third. Okay. And I'm going to suggest that in Desmos, you could type in 5 divided by one-third, and it will help get you the answer. You can also try to remember that when we divide fractions, we real, really end up multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So anytime you see this fraction coefficient, you can go straight to multiplying by the reciprocal. And so Q would equal 15. Multiplying by 3 is the same thing as dividing by 1 third. 